You all ready for more close-up cute boy faces? Eee! Hello! Welcome back, friends, to RDLP. We are quite a ways into our foray with Sweet Fuse at your side, and when we last left off, we uh, had won the big race with the big winners! Mitarashi and Wakasa won the kart race championship tournament of champions and have been invited to a victory tea party. And so, that's where we're at now. We have descended upon this scene uh, straight out of Alice in Wonderland. And so we'll see how they do. So we open the door to the next area in silence. I got the feeling that everyone else was questioning Midorashi's actions during the race, although Midorashi himself was in high spirits. That's right! He almost did absolutely kill us in a terrible car accident. A uh, cart accident is probably more realistic. And he's probably completely oblivious to that fact. I mean, we did have to win, so maybe that meant something like this had to happen. We probably could have avoided that if Bidarashi wasn't such a pig. If the piglets had won, we would have failed that game and everything would have been over. Nobody could bring themselves to judge, Mid judge Midarashi too harshly. And it's not like he tried to hurt us on purpose. Beyond the door was a small forest. A blue sky spread out above us. The whole place felt nice. It was all fake, of course. The sky was a painting on a domed ceiling, and the forest was plastic and metal. In the center of the clearing was a single house. The chimneys looked like rabbit ears. I was actually a little disappointed. It would have been pretty cute if it wasn't part of this awful game. Yes! We win! Wonderland circuit complete! The announcer's voice rang through the clearing. All right! Midorashi's triumphant roar echoed across the dome. Apparently, Shido had uh, finally had enough. <gasps> They're gonna fight... You! Let's talk. Huh? Don't you huh me! What you did back there was really dangerous, and I sure hope you've got a good explanation. Ugh, what the hell, man? Why are you giving me this white knight noise? Look, I didn't have a choice, okay? If I hadn't done something, we would have lost. Oh, if I hadn't done something, we would have lost, and then we would have all been screwed. And that was enough of a reason to put the rest of us in danger? Yeah, what do you need me to spell it out for you? And I got a name, you know. You, me again, and we're gonna have to throw down. I hope they throw down. Shido grabbed Midorashi by the collar, pulled him down to face him. The other man just stared back, unintimidated. Hmm. What should I do? It feels like they're about to fight. Oh, they're about to fight. That just happened. I'd barely thought the words when Midorashi's fist slammed into Shido's face. <laughs> I'm getting really sick of your holier-than-thou attitude, bro. Let it go. Oh, uh, face punches. Okay. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> probably not the greatest time for this right now, but whatever. Shido stumbled back, then threw himself forward, driving a fist into Midorashi's stomach. Even Shido is, is reciprocating. He's not the one to usually do that. I don't... I guess, I guess their pride is just getting the best of them? They started trading blows one after another. But they appeared to be evenly matched. Is Shido really a match for Midorashi and or vice versa? I feel like Shido would, as a cop, would know how to deal with this situation. But that's okay. All right. You'll just watch. Shocked. No one wanted to step in. What should I do? I looked over at Urabe. He shrugged, then turned to the fighters. Please calm down. Is fighting amongst ourselves not exactly what Count Hogstein would want? It's what the devil would want. But his words seemed to fall on deaf ears. Oh dear. He sighed. Robbie doesn't look so good. He did say he doesn't do well on fast things, but I didn't think it'd be this bad. His face was pale, and the longer he stood, the more he began to waver back and forth. Oh, that's why he's not intervening. I feel like everyone else would be all up into intervening. Are these... Is Midorashi and Shido really such, like linchpins within our group that once they are fighting, nobody can stop them. 
I mean, I guess they're kind of like titans within the group, but what about me? I could stop them. Shouldn't I be like... Okay, someone needed to stop the fight, but I was getting more worried about Urabe with every passing minute. Unfortunately, nobody else seems to be doing anything. Okay, so we can either break up the fight, which is going on regardless of whatever I do, or I can check in on Urabe. I kind of am actually worried about him more than anything else. I, I don't want to get involved. Whatever Midorashi and Shido are doing, that's they'll just figure it out. And once I have Urabe figured out, we can pool our resources and take care of this. <sighs> so, calling reinforcements. That's the plan. Your face looks really pale. Are you okay? There wasn't any point to trying to break up the fight, but maybe Urabe could use some help. He looked over at me with an apologetic smile. Thank you for your concern, but I'm only a bit ill from the cart. Please, you needn't worry. Okay. You're very kind. Oh, we get a little heart out of it. I wonder if that means it was the right decision, and the other decision might not have actually given us anything. If that's the case, can we, like, max out with all characters, or... I wonder what that means. He wiped some sweat off his forehead with a shaky hand and smiled at me again. Now, I think it is past time that two of you stopped this nonsense. Yeah! There we go. Urabe's got this handled. Somehow, Urabe managed to calm them down, and the fight ended. See? I knew we could do this. We just need to put together. Urgh. Growling, angry man noises. Well, the fight might be over, but we're still a long, long way from anything you might call teamwork. We'd come together the day before, and I'd almost been optimistic, but today it seems like everything was falling apart. I sincerely apologize for interrupting when you're in the middle of having so much fun, but the tea party will be starting soon. Pig's voice hit me like a bucket of ice water. Everyone but the winning pair should head into that house over there. Do we have to go? We could just be like, no. Uh, he'll make us go. Be a wasted fight. So, I guess we're all going in the house, and meanwhile... It's all up to Mitarashi and Wakasa. A tea party, huh? I can't wait. Shirabe was the first to start towards the house, and the rest of us followed. A table had been set for a tea party, with stacks of fake dishes and teacups spread across it. In the chairs were statues of a rabbit, a mouse, and a man with a hat. Mitarashi and Wakasa stopped at the table. The rest of us headed toward the house. As we passed the table, Shirabe tapped his forehead and began to speak. The Mad Tea Party is part of a sequence in Alice in Wonderland that takes place at the March Hare's house. In attendance are the March Hare himself, the Dormouse, and the Mad Hatter. The Hatter has incurred the wrath of the Queen of Hearts. Consequently, his watch has stopped at 6 o'clock. For him, it's always time for tea. Okay, so we are full into the lore of Alice in Wonderland, and hopefully that will help us through this whole thing. Mad Hatter's incurred the wrath of the Queen of Hearts. This is a very peculiar house. As I looked around the room we found ourselves in, I had to agree. There are spikes coming out of the ceiling. This is kind of the focal point of the room. <laughs> Outside it looked quaint, inviting, and downright whimsical. And inside it is a metal spike death trap. Of all of the cliches of a... Uh, action film. <laughs> this is straight Indiana Jones. There's no way that ceiling's up to code. Alright! <laughs> Looked up to see the entire ceiling was a metal plate covered in giant spikes. I think we can see out through those windows. Shido is completely not even... like He's like, spikes up top? That's fine. Day in the life of me. He was right. Outside we could see the tea party. On the wall opposite of the door was a giant television screen. So whatever it is, they really don't want us talking to Wakasa and Mitarashi. So we're completely... we're isolated. We're in an isolation chamber with just each other. And... huh. I've got a bad feeling about this. Thanks, Miyoshi. A loud clank filled the house. Well, now the door's locked. It won't open. I'll wiggle the handle. Apparently it's got a handle. It was looking like Mayoshi's bad feelings had been justified. 
We were trying to see what was going on outside when the announcer began to speak again. Welcome to the March Hare's house, everyone. Well, that's what I'd like to say, but oh no, if you don't hurry up, everyone is going to die. <laughs> Thanks, announcer. As I spoke, I heard a metallic groan from the ceiling. Ah! It appears the spikes have begun to move! Even Shirabe has dropped his, uh, snack stick. Then, if we don't do anything, we gonna get skewered. It seems like that's about the size of it. Excellent. Although, I mean, look at it! Giant spikes coming out of the ceilings, it's so cliche. Does it even function right? I question its ability to murder. I mean, couldn't we just, like, get into, like, a little ball and then... I don't know. Like, not get hit by spikes? There's a lot of room in there, I feel like. But, I don't know. Maybe you could, like, lay on the ground and, like, weave your way around the spikes. Just lie down, you know? Okay. Now it's time for the tea party to begin. Though the two of you have been invited, you're welcome to invite your friends as well. But only if you can command the mad host to do so. I think that's the key of the puzzle. What is this for the people outside? Okay, so only they can hear it. Well, we all can hear it, but only they... Uh, it's only for them. Hmm. Which means that they're telling us this just to tease and mess with us. I looked around and everyone nodded. We'd all thought the same thing. Everything was going to depend on Midarashi and Wakasa. <laughs> oh! And I'd hurry if I were you. If you don't get them to the party soon, your friends are going to die. Although we couldn't hear them through the window, we saw Midarashi and Wakasa suddenly look up, surprised. She was like, no biggie, I've died so many times. Ugh, so our lives are in their hands. His voice was grim. If I'd just gotten in a fight with someone, I'd be uneasy about saving them, saving my life too. Yeah. This is gonna go, come down to a puzzle. Mitarashi is, uh, not number one on my list, puzzle solvers. Nothing we can do, though. We're stuck in here. Ugh! Watch people trying to save your life when you're helpless sucks! I gave them everything I could think of on the way here. I just hope it helps. Shirabe rubbed his forehead. I thought this uh, his sudden monologue earlier had been strange, but uh, now I see what he's tr trying to do. Very clever! So he just tried to give him whatever he could right at the beginning. We all crowded around the two-way windows to look outside as Midarashi and Wakasa came running over toward the house. I would hope they are... Oh, the two windows, not two-way. <laughs> Didn't make sense. Midarashi ran to the door and started jiggling the handle, but it was locked up tight. Wakaza pounded on the window. Hey, are you guys okay? Are you locked in? His voice came through over the speaker, just like the announcers had. What should I do? The ceiling is moving slow. Moving down, but... I don't think it's gonna matter. Whatever I shout, it's... Gonna just do the same thing. The ceiling's going to crush us! Shouted as loud as I could, but he didn't seem to hear me. Yeah. I jabbed my finger at the ceiling. Wakaza looked up and gasped. What?! I mimed the ceiling coming down full of spikes. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Mirashi left the door and came over to the window. I saw his eyes widen as he noticed the ceiling. I don't think they can hear us. The pig has made sure we're just an audience. Shido frowned and made a shooing motion to the two men at the window. Go away! Go do things! Guess he's telling them to go back and solve the puzzle. They didn't seem to get it though. Mirashi looked puzzled, and Wakasa just kept nodding. Damn it, I can't get through to them. If only I had studied the gestures the piglets made more closely. He grimaced and punched stuff, because he's manly. Punch, 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 punch. Think maybe we should get back to the table. The door isn't gonna the door isn't gonna open, so the only way I we can help them is to solve the puzzle. Damn. Guess we don't have a choice. They turned and stomped back to the table as we all watched nervously. Even though they were a ways away, we could still hear them talking quite clearly. Alright, so if I'm understanding that announcement right, we need to command the mad host of this tea party to invite our friends, yeah? Yeah, so which one of these guys is the mad host? Hmm. There were three statues sitting in the chairs around the table. A hare, a mouse, and a man in a hat. 